Manchester United sacked Eric Ten Hag after their worst finish in the top flight since 1990 and their worst start to a Premier League campaign ever. They have quickly hired Ruben Amarim. Amarim has a scary style of play, which has made him perform beyond expectations in Europe as he has beaten Premier League heavyweights Arsenal previously in the Europa League. United believe that Amarim, who's currently 39, can be as inspirational as Sir Alex Ferguson. But why will he be different to the other high-profile and previously successful managers that have taken on the poison chalice, like David Moyes, Louis van Gaal and, of course, Jose Mourinho? Well, Ruben Amarim has been flirting with becoming a Premier League manager for a while now. He was previously linked to become West Ham's manager a long while ago, and since then, he has been pointed towards as Pep Guardiola's successor at Man City when he leaves in a year or two. But most interestingly, he was very close to becoming Liverpool's manager when Klopp stepped down in January of this year. However, Liverpool eventually chose Arne Slot over him. With all these rumours, Amarim must be an excellent manager, right? Let's find out. Manchester United hired Eric Ten Hag after his excellent achievements. He won three Dutch league titles, two KNVB Cups, and also led the team to the semi-finals of the 2018-19 UEFA Champions League. Ten Hag didn't have experience as a first-team manager in any of the top five European leagues, but United believed in his football philosophy and his ability to integrate youngsters into the team. Now, Ten Hag failed to live up to expectations, although he did manage to end United's six-year trophy drought by winning the 2023 League Cup. He also won the 2024 FA Cup versus Premier League winners Manchester City against all odds. With how Ten Hag performed, there is scepticism about Amarim, who is also undoubtedly a big risk, despite breaking Sporting's long trophy drought. The 39-year-old manager has never coached outside of Portugal, which is a European league but is ranked a tier below the Dutch league. Ineos, the co-owners of United, believe that Amarim has the potential to be like Sir Alex Ferguson, who joined the club after managing Aberdeen and finally won United their first league trophy, ending a 26-year wait. Ferguson won that title in the inaugural Premier League season of 92-93, which made it a cornerstone of Premier League history. Speaking of history, Amarim's title win for Sporting in the 2020-21 season was considered historic. He won the league with 85 points and just one defeat all season. Absolutely breathtaking. So, now you can get a clear picture of why United have made the decision to hire Amarim. But how does he elevate them in the Premier League? Can Amarim get the best out of United's current crop of players? What is his system and how do United's players fit in? Amarim began his career as a coach at 3rd Division Casa Pia in 2018. His rise as a coach has definitely been rapid. He left Casapia in January 2019 after being suspended from football for a year for giving instructions during a match without having the necessary coaching badge. Amarim was then appointed as Braga's reserve team coach later that year. However, in January 2020, he received an unexpected promotion to the first team when Braga sacked Ricardo Sapinto. A rookie coach with such a huge responsibility, well, it looked certain he would be dismissed. But Amarim stunned everyone. He went on a crazy winning run that included beating Benfica away. It would be the first time in 65 years that Braga had managed that feat. So Amarim sure does love creating history. In 13 games, he won 10 times and lost twice and drew once. Sporting saw this and they snapped him up by March of 2020. It would be one of the best decisions the club would ever make. Now, will Amarim be the best decision Manchester United will make in recent years? I mean, this wouldn't really be saying much, but still. United have never shied away from supporting a coach with decent players in the transfer window. They have more than adequately backed Ten Hag and signed for him the players that he specifically wanted. Unfortunately, 
Ten Hag hasn't been able to get the best out of these players. United don't play an easily identifiable style, and it looks like the players don't really fit what he wants to play, or maybe they aren't sure how he wants them to play. Alejandro Garnacho and Marcus Rashford are players who like to operate as inside forwards, but they find themselves keeping more narrow under Ten Hag. Bruno Fernandes, who has built a reputation as a brutal force in attack, has found himself playing much deeper. Casemiro and Manuel Agate, who are professionals in the brutal, traditional role of a defensive midfielder where all they have to do is break up play and smash legs, well, they have now been tasked with building up from deep. Even Andre Onana, who loves to start play from the back and can make a defence-splitting long ball as a goalkeeper, finds himself unable to affect play as much. So can Amarim succeed where Ten Hag has failed and get these players to play as a unit? Well, Amarim plays a 3-4-3 that becomes 3-4-2-1 and no, his emphasis isn't on defence first. He loves to play a possession-based yet direct free-flowing football that allows the team to have as many as five players around the opposition box. Yet, the tactics do also prioritise defence. He loves both possession, direct and transitional play. He encourages his players to press high and also defend deep. It looks confusing, just like Ten Hag's style, but that's what actually makes Amorim scary. His sides are unpredictable. This makes them effective. Now, now that you have an idea of how he plays, who out of the Man United squad will benefit the most from these new tactics and philosophy? Well, Amarim loves to build up from the back, so he employs a ball-playing goalkeeper, which in United's case will be Andre Onana. Onana is very skilled with his feet on the ball, and he will begin play with the three United centre-backs, which under Amarim could be Lissandro Martinez, Matthias De Ligt and Harry Maguire. When Lenny Euro returns from injury, he would probably rotate with the three centre-backs. So in this build-up phase, it would appear as if United are starting up play with four players who would bait the opposition's press. Now, for more on Lenny Euro, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss our video. In the midfield, Amarim plays a double pivot and his two wingers tuck into the central attacking positions with the wingbacks stretching play. Amarim doesn't have a certain way of building up. He is a pragmatic manager. The way each player positions on the pitch allows them to either play a settled position game or go direct by making passes to the wing-backs who are usually higher up the pitch. The idea is to be fluid and provide options that will allow Sporting to get better passing angles and beat the opposition press. Amarim's Sporting have a reputation in Europe for being press-resistant. They were third behind Manchester City and Inter Milan in the amount of touches on the ball before losing the ball to an opponent. In the 23-24 season, Sporting averaged 74.9 touches before losing the ball to an opposition tackle. In a settled position play, United could be dangerous as, like Sporting, they can decide to speed up or slow down the game. Sporting was so patient that they had over 10 passes before creating a shot action in the 23-24 season and were the team with the most sequence of passes in the Portuguese league. United could be like this and their double pivot, who could be Casemiro or Ugarte and Eriksson or Menu, would be key. They would serve as a combination of an enforcer for ball winning and stability as well as creativity. Now, Casemiro or Ugarte will be the ball winners in this setup, and Ericsson or Mainu would be in charge of creativity or energy in Mainu's case and progressing play. Unfortunately, there is an obvious problem. Where would Bruno fit in this setup? Amarim doesn't usually use the traditional 10, which is exactly where Bruno thrives. There will need to be a tweak in either Amarim's formation or Fernandez's playing style will have to adapt. Playing deeper really doesn't suit him. So, while he can pair with Casemiro or Ugarte to be the creative player, he will surely better thrive 
as one of the wingers maybe that tuck into the central areas where he will be close to the striker. But this means he will have dual responsibility. He could drift out wide when the situation calls for it or tuck into the more familiar central areas. Kevin De Bruyne does something similar for City. Fernandez playing close to the striker is something that Premier League teams should be scared of. The other winger that would tuck inside could be Rashford or Garnacho, but the two of them haven't exactly been super consistent. Now, Ahmad Diallo and Anthony are two other options for the wings, and the four of them are built for this role. What Amarim does with Anthony in particular will be very interesting and will likely reveal whether he is actually a useful player or not. These four have the capacity to operate as inside forwards. Now, this isn't the same as what Amarim would want, but it is close. Their closeness with the strikers would allow them to thrive. If Xerxy leads the line for United under Amarim's setup, he would benefit from being close to other attackers as he has incredible link-up play from his days in Bologna. Hoyland is another strike option for Amarim's setup and his presence will make United more dynamic and more direct. When Sporting signed Giocaresh, they began to play more direct with the wing-backs looking to play quick passes to him to exploit his speed and strength. The same could be true for Hoyland, but the striker has a poacher's mindset. Hoyland has the pace to be similar to Giocaresh, so we could see an evolution in how he plays. Fullback Masrawi could become more important as he's more effective in the final third of a game. He could strike up a relationship with Hoyland, just as Nuno Santos was for Giocaresh. Like Mazraoui, this setup could also benefit Diogo Dallo, who can also be effective in the final third despite his horrendous miss the other day. He is decent going forward. Both Mazraoui and Dallo are decent defensively and offensively, so this system could prove to benefit them the most. And of course, Luke Shaw, but he has reportedly suffered yet another setback in his recovery from injury, believe it or not. Speaking about Kyokoresh, Amarim may be the one who can get the deal over the line for the excellent striker to finally come to the Premier League, and he would be like another Haaland, someone who's perfect for this new United system. Like if you want to see a video about this player. United will defend with five players, with two midfielders and the three attackers dropping deep. With this, it should be difficult to break United down. This is something that United need, as they have been extremely easy to play through in a lot of their games under Ten Hag. However, this wouldn't be quite the easy deal for United. They have not had a playing identity for a while now, and it could take a while for them to adapt. The stakes are high for Amarim, and he has to hit the ground running. He has to prove to the critics that he has what it takes to turn United around. Can he be the one to lead United to glory? Let us know what you think and subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed this video.